These days, smartphones and tablets are part of everyday life, whether you like it or not. And it's great that we have a single device that can play music, play games, take notes, surf the web, and even make calls. So if we have all these features in one package, can we also use it to control LEGO trains? No problem. Here's how. For this tutorial, we'll need a LEGO train and the infrared LED that we used in tutorial 11. We'll also need an Arduino, this is a tiny DigiSpark, a LEGO Power Functions extension cable, your phone, and a Bluetooth receiver. This is an HC05 unit. Add in a few wires and some LEGO plates, and we're going to build all of this into the locomotive with no extra battery packs or wagons. It will all be contained within the train. Let's start with the Arduino. The DigiSpark is one of the smallest Arduino clones you can buy. It cost me $3. It has six pins that work as input, output, and PWM, and I've also added my own extra earth and power pins connected to the standard pins here. You plug it into a USB socket to program it or power it, but you can also supply power on the VIN pin, which is what we're going to do. We'll take the power from the train's battery pack using this extension cable, which has a standard power functions plug on one end and the old Technic plug on the other. On the bottom side of this plug are two bare metal plates. So, take a stripped piece of wire and press this against the metal and hold it in place with a 1x2 plate. Do the same thing on the other side, and now you've got two wires to connect to your Arduino. I'm using socket ends here, just match the wires to your Arduino's power pin types. Plug that in, Turn on the LEGO battery, and you can see we've got power. That's great. We tuck all the cables into this empty space, and bring the power wires into the train's cabin, where we put the Arduino. To control the train, we just connect our infrared LED to PWM and earth pins, and mount that over the standard power functions receiver. And here's the Bluetooth board. It needs power and ground wires, plus two more for data. Now, when the Arduino communicates with other devices, we call those pins RX and TX, which means transmit and receive. Your Arduino might have dedicated pins for this, like on the Uno, but on this DigiSpark, we'll use any pins and we'll declare those in the code later. With all those connected, we can now receive signals from a Bluetooth device into the Arduino.
but how do we make our phones send those signals? There are many apps out there that can create universal remote controls. I'm using Robo Remote just because it's free and on Android, and I'm sure there are versions for iPhones too. I'm not going to make a pretty app here because it takes too much time. I'll just add a few buttons to show you how it works. Tap the screen to make a button, then tap it and select Set Press Action. I'm just going to send a different number for each button, and in our code, we'll work out what to do when the Arduino receives those numbers. To speed things up, here's my test app with five buttons sending values from 0 to 4. When you're ready to use it, tap Menu and connect to the HC05 Bluetooth unit. And here's the code that's going to read those values. As always, we need our Power Functions library to control the infrared LED, which you can download from this link if you haven't got it already, and put it in the Arduino library folder on your computer. We also need the Software Serial library, which is how we read those RX and TX pins to get Bluetooth data into the Arduino. We declare which pins on the Arduino we're going to use for that and the LED. We need a character variable to store the single number we got from each button in our app, and we have a boolean, which means true or false, to check if we got any new data from the Bluetooth receiver. And we've got three variables to check the train speed and direction, which I'll explain later. In the setup, we declare that we want to start reading the Bluetooth, and in the loop function, we call up two other functions, one to read the Bluetooth value, and the other one to process that value to control the train. Here's the receive function. If we just got a value from the RX and TX pins, we store that value as Bluetooth data, and we flag that we just got new data. Very simple. The control train function checks that we just got some new data. If so, it reads the Bluetooth data variable and switches the action inside the function depending on the value. Each action is called a case, and we covered how to use those in tutorial 7, so check that video if you need more details. Simply put, the switch case codes run the code that matches the number we sent from our app. So if we press the zero button on our phone, it runs this piece of code and only this code. If we press one, it runs this case and so on and so on. When the case has run, we switch the boolean so that the Arduino knows there's no new data, and then it goes back to the loop function again. I'll cover what each of those cases does in a few minutes. Now, below this, you can see that I've got another function called setTrainSpeed, and this contains a single command from our Power Functions library. We covered this in tutorial 11, but here's a quick summary. Use one of the infrared receiver's power connections, set the mode type, which isn't important right now, set the train speed and direction according to the PWM variable, and control the red connection on channel 1. Now, you can change the color and channel to match your train. But what does this PWM value mean, and how does the power function receiver know what to do with it? For that, we have to dig into the power functions documentation, which is in the library folder. This file shows all the commands the infrared receiver accepts. Seven forward speeds, seven reverse speeds, a stop and a break. There's also this number, which is hexadecimal, meaning it goes from 0 to 15 instead of 1 to 10, but we can still send decimal numbers and the IR receiver will run the command that matches the number. This number is stored in our variable PWM value. So if we send a value of 7, we get forward maximum speed. If we send a value of 15, we've got the slowest reverse speed, and a value of 0 means stop. So let's go back and look at the cases I've written to see how we apply those commands using our app's buttons. Case 0 is just a test case. It's an emergency stop button, so it sends the value of stop and then sets the train speed. You've also got a stop resume button. It's like the red button on the power function's remote, so it checks if the train is currently moving, stores that speed, and then stops the train. Press it again, and it'll restore the previous speed, which we saved in PWN prev value. Case 2 swaps the direction. When we press it, the train stops for half a second just to protect the motor. 
Then we subtract the current speed value from 16 to give us the opposite direction value based on the commands we looked at earlier. Then we apply that new speed to the train. Cases 3 and 4 adjust our speed up and down buttons, so they check the direction and then increase or decrease the speed value depending on the direction of the train. Because forward speed commands are numbered 1 to 7, we count up to increase speed and down to decrease. But reverse speed commands have 9 as the highest speed and 15 as the lowest. So we count down to speed up and count up to speed down. Strange, but that's how it works. So now we have all that code, let's send it to the Arduino. For DigiSparks, you compile the code and then have 60 seconds to plug the DigiSpark into your USB. So we'll do that and we're all set to go. Connect up the wires, squeeze the DigiSpark into your train cabin and we're all set up. Turn the train on, then fire up your phone app and connect to the Arduino via Bluetooth. As soon as it's paired, we can control the train. That gives us all the functionality of the original Power Functions remote, plus a speed restore button, and we can even add extra buttons. For example, to turn on some lights on the locomotive or anything else you can think of. Try it out yourself and let me know how it works in the comments below. One tip, if you have any connectivity issues, check your train's batteries. Although the Arduino uses very little power itself, the train's motor combined with the Bluetooth receiver can drain your batteries quite quickly if you're using cheap cells. In the next video, we'll cover more wireless communications to control multiple trains, so you can look forward to that coming soon. Thanks for watching.